Hey guys, welcome back. We got uh, we got quite the job today. It's probably gonna take a few weeks. It's gonna be tough. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be without a truck for so long. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're changing the brake master cylinder on this truck. Wind, if you knock over that expensive camera, I'm gonna go big shit. I know it sucks. I'm, I apologize in advance for the wind. There ain't nothing I can do about it. It's Oklahoma. It happens. Um, we're gonna do the brake master cylinder on this truck. I literally felt the thing go. I was towing the trailer. I went to hit the brakes. Had good pedal, good pedal, good pedal, slowing down, and then it. I felt it explode inside, and I got a soft pedal. So I, I know it went. Um, I'm not even gonna troubleshoot it. You know, the master cylinders on these are cheap enough. Well, I say cheap enough since I'm a motorcraft horror. Uh, it ran 267 delivered, and that was with overnight shipping, which was only 10 bucks. So about 250 bucks. If that math works out, I don't know with tax, whatever. Uh, yeah, so 260 ish, 270 ish uh, to get the motorcraft part. I'll show you guys the part here in a second. It's literally a master cylinder. It's not too difficult. I'll put the uh, part number in the description below. Um, now you have to. So some of these trucks came with integrated trailer brake controllers and most all of them came with crews i believe so you have to order your master cylinder based on what you have um, i use fordparts.com you put your vin number in there and it gives you the parts you need for your truck based off your vin um, there's still some some research that you might have to do because you know the vin isn't going to tell you if it's got an integrated brake the trailer brake controller or not but if you have the trailer brake buttons and you have crews this part number should work for you um, it's fairly easy well, I'll bring you guys over here um, some of you that may be uh, a little leery about doing it don't be it's pretty easy um, down turn this light on on super bright so you guys can see get down in there so underneath if you have the front if you have cruise you'll have that front sensor right there i believe the front one's cruise and then the back one is for the integrated trailer brake controller so if you're having issues with your trailer brake controller swap there's my finger Oop, there's my finger swap that sensor if your cruise doesn't work i believe i did a video on this i can't i've made some money now i can't remember I guess that means I've arrived. But if your cruise doesn't work, swap that sensor. And there's a way that you can test it as well. I I almost I could swear I've done a video on this. I, if I if I did a video on it, I'll uh, put it in the description. If I didn't, then I need to make one. But yeah, so you unplug those two sensors. There's just these two hydraulic lines and then a bolt on either side so there's a bolt right about there or actually a nut so you slide this off the studs and i believe we have enough room that we don't have to take the degas bottle out we can just take those nuts off take those lines off undo the plugs and uh, slide it back and up wiggle do do all the things to get it out of there um, i will tell you you know you're, you're gonna have open open plugs so I would cover those plugs with uh, some kind of plastic or you know a sandwich bag or something you want to cover those up so you don't get no brake fluid in there because it'll start eating that rubber seal that keeps water out of there it'll eat that thing up so um, cover those up undo the two brake lines undo the two I would probably break the brake lines loose and then get the mount nuts off and then take the lines off that way you're spilling the minimal amount of uh, brake fluid necessary to uh, get this thing out of here but let me get all set up and then uh, let me show you guys the sky let me get all set up and then uh, we'll do a little time-lapse action so that you 
you guys can see me cussing. You won't hear it because it'll be a time lapse, but we'll we'll get going here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Motocraft part number right there. Freeze frame it if you need to, but that gets you that right there. It's already got the sensors installed, which is a good thing because I know the sensors in mine are good because the front one's brand new and the back one obviously still works because I use the trailer brakes. So now I have two spare sensors. I'm not going to take those out of there. I'll leave the, the old ones in the, the old ones in the old uh, master cylinder, but it's literally ready to go. You know, that's got the, oh shit, I did, I said two plugs. I meant three. That's your, that's, if you're low on brake fluid, that'll trip your mill, which that plug, get out of your box, is obviously in the same spot on the other side you can probably see it right there so all right ladies and gentlemen we got the uh the plugs are off and i've got them tucked over to the side there's enough there should be enough room to where you can just kind of shove them off to the side everything that's going to come out is going to come out from this side and hopefully i've got you guys at a decent enough angle to where you can see what i'm doing i'm scared to move the camera because i don't think i'll get it back again <laughs> Um, <clears throat> what you're going to need for this is a 14 deep, a 14 wrench, and a 13 wrench. So the lines are 13s, the nuts are 14s, and just your, uh, your old wiener beaters here to get those plugs off. Um, they are, there's press, pull down on all of them, all three. So... Uh, I'm going to start loosening, hopefully loosening this one, which we're not going to be able to use that. Alright, so this is the point where I'm going to fast forward everything. So, enjoy.
So <clears throat> the other one's out and compared to other jobs that I do, that was really fast. So um, the video would have kept going, but my battery died. So we'll go back in with uh, this one. There's nothing you need to do. Just make sure that this little plunger right here goes in the hole in the end of the uh, master cylinder, which <laughs> if you miss the hole on this, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. It's pretty easy to hit. Just like that. Get her in there. And there is, I forgot to tell you guys before, there is, for your hydro boost, there is this little bracket right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. But the bracket holds these two hydro boost lines. So once you put the master cylinder back on, just slide this back over the stud before you put that nut on. But first, first thing you need to do is get these hoses started and get them started with it loose. Don't ask me how I know. Years and years of uh, mechanicking. I'll tell you right now, get it started with it loose. <laughs> you go to tightening that thing up and then you can't start the hoses and you're loosening it back up again. So take these fancy little plugs out. They keep dirt and other bad juju from getting in there. And then get them both started. And do not, whatever you do, do not cross thread these. That is a bad day. I'll tell you that right now. Once you got them both started, I wouldn't say snug them up right now, but get them, you know, finger tight. You want them deep enough in there to where <clears throat> when you tighten them, you're putting pretty much final torque on them with a couple of wrenches or a couple swipes of a wrench. You don't want to be tightening these things forever when you can't move the master cylinder around. Plus, it gets this rag out of your way and there's less chance of introducing air into the system, which you already have to bleed it because you did open them. But I have a fancy special tool that I'm gonna show you guys. So get the nut started on there. And I did, you guys may have noticed in the time lapse, on the other side of this hydro boost, it's just a damn bolt going through there. It's the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. I can't tell if it's supposed to be slotted. I should know this because I did replace this hydro boost, but it doesn't feel like it wants to fall into a slot or anything. So <clears throat> what I had to do, and this is the weirdest damn thing, I had to hold a half inch wrench Probably the one damn thing on this truck that's standard instead of metric on the back of that 14 you know while i was taking the, the nut off but i had to hold it a uh, half inch back there so i'll go ahead and go back to time lapse and we'll get this thing put back on
So, <clears throat> hopefully I stopped the time lapse right here. One of the biggest mistakes that people make doing brakes, or brake lines I guess, is they over tighten these lines and you don't want to do that. So there's flares on the end of these lines and you can actually crush them. So before I put these lines back in here, I checked to make sure there was no foreign material on the end of them. <clears throat> because one piece of dirt between the flare and the mounting surface will create a leak. <clears throat> so you may not have been able to see it, but off camera I wiped the end of it with a clean rag. <clears throat> but they're in, they're tight. So now we can take the plugs <coughs> and plug them back up. Heard a click there. And you can't mess these plugs up. They're uh, essentially the, uh, the harness won't let you. Um, I guess you could probably get them backwards, but the plugs are keyed. And all you guys are getting is probably my armpit right now, but I'm trying to get this last plug that's really kind of stubborn. Hope y'all are enjoying the view of my shoulder. Oh, come on, Bessie being a pain in my ass there she goes <clears throat> she ain't clicked yet though she's a quiet one i guess it's on there it's just so i saw the the little lever pop up and then go over the so i know it's on uh there we go we're gonna fill her up with brake fluid, bleed the brakes. Um, it's changed. Um, as far as bleeding the brakes goes, this does have ABS on the front. These trucks only have front ABS, I believe. Well, oh, no. Hell, I don't know. But <clears throat> there is a ABS bleeding procedure that you need force scan to do. Um, or you can take it to the dealer to, to bleed it. We didn't let much fluid out. As a matter of fact, I, I almost would be willing to bet that if I filled it up with fluid, it'd be just fine because all the air, I never turned the lines down. So any air that got in is right at the top of the line. So if I filled this up with fluid and worked it a little bit, it will probably bleed the air up and out through the reservoir. But I'm still gonna bleed the brakes just to make sure. But yeah, um, I'm not gonna bore you guys with how to bleed brakes. It's pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you don't have the vacuum tool that I have, you can fill the reservoir up and open the wheel bleeders one at a time and just let them drip. That'll get the it'll get fluid moving and the air will move out. So, yeah, um, that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, there's not a bunch of trash in the background. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, give me a like and a subscribe and do all the things. I appreciate the hell out of it and uh, some more content coming soon. I got some more stuff I want to do. So, thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a good day.